Okay, hi. Um, I'm Jeff Fong. I'm a designer on the studio responsible for the, the creative direction that we're called Metro. Um, just kind of going back a little bit, uh, where, where Metro came from uh, originally was it was a, a lot of it was inspired uh, originally from uh, the, the wayfinding graphics that you see at transportation centers, hence the name Metro. Uh, we're just really inspired by the, just really clean, pure uh, uh, graphic uh, design of, of, of these uh, wayfinding graphics. Um, and we created a set of principles around that in, in some initial early uh, design studies. But, uh, but before we went too far with it, um, you know, I had a few designers kind of go out and, and um, create some mood boards just to, you know, to see you know, what types of designs uh, are consistent with these principles we had. And, and what these designers came back with um, were a lot of stuff that was you know, kind of uh, based on 40 years of, of Swiss and Swiss influence design from Josef Mueller Brockman to uh, experimental jet set. Uh, you know, we found a lot of stuff in, in print, packaging, uh, that were really aligned with the stuff that we're thinking about as far as uh, coming up with the design direction for, for our UI. Um, you know, it was great because, you know, we, we, there was a certain consistency in, in, in the stuff that, that the designers came back with, so we were aligned on how we thought about uh, this design direction, but it was also very inspirational to see a lot of this beautiful work that's been done over the last 40 years. And even the stuff that we see around us today um, from uh, packaging and um, uh, uh, identity systems and, and, and advertising. There's a lot of work around us that, that, uh, that I think is really uh, consistent with how we think about uh, our, our UI design. Uh, looking at international as we start thinking about uh, moving uh, towards international district uh, markets, uh, you know, seeing whether or not some of these uh, principles hold up. And, and in fact, it, it actually does. Uh, we saw some really great stuff in, in China and Japan. Um, this is actually one of my favorite slides because uh, we, you know, we talk to localizers a lot and people say, oh, you can never crop uh, Asian characters. And it's like, well, really? You know, I, think, I think it's been done before. I think it's actually OK. And, um, uh, and, and, and I just love the use of, of scale and, and, and some of these uh, designs. Looking at software, there's a lot of work that's being done uh, by the Office Labs team that we found really inspirational, even in games. And uh, uh, Zune uh, uh, has had a lot of influence on, on where we are today. Uh, so the principles that, that's behind uh, the, the, the Metro design, uh, keeping things light and simple, uh, the use of typography, motion, content, and keeping things honest, uh, we'll go into detail here, uh, are the high level principles uh, behind our design. Light and simple. Uh, and I think of this as both uh, affecting how we design uh, our UI from an art direction point of view, but also uh, interaction-wise. So focusing on primary tasks, I think, is, is really important to us. Um, it does a couple of things. One, it simplifies the interaction model that you see uh, on the UI on a per-screen basis, but it also allows us to really kind of simplify the graphic design of, of, of the UI. Um, you know, just get rid of stuff that's not really necessary. And in fact, uh, I would argue it's okay to have white space in UI. It, it causes all attention with, with developers. There's a tendency to want to fill every pixel with, with functionality. But, uh, but I think it's okay to kind of step back and, 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 and say it's okay to have some margins to have, to let the UI breathe a little bit. Uh, it actually makes the UI a little bit easier to read, to, to consume what you have on screen. Um, and I think it just makes the overall look and feel of the design uh, just a lot more beautiful and simple. Uh, typography, uh, if you look at UIs across the board, the one thing that's always there is uh, words. You know, there's words in UI. Type. And we, we want to think about type as being beautiful and not just legible. If it's legible, you know, it's Arial 12 point bold everywhere and everybody could read that, but it doesn't have any, uh, it, it just doesn't make it look beautiful. We want to think about uh, hierarchy, the visual hierarchy, and making sure that there's a sense of hierarchy on the on the layout. Uh, it's really just good straightforward design and thinking about uh, the weight, balance, and scale of, of, of type on, on, on the page to give that sense of, of hierarchy. 
uh, motion is uh, really what makes the UI come to life. Um, if you look at the screenshots from page to page, yeah, we want those layouts to be just you know graphically really, really beautiful, but the thing that makes the UI come to life is how the UI responds to you as you tap on it, as you scroll, uh, as you come to the end of a list, and how that UI uh, responds to you is, is really the, th the thing that, that makes it feel responsive and gives it some life. Um, it also allows us to create a system, uh, thinking about how you navigate from one page to the next page and coming back again. Uh, the, 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 the animation, the transition, is really the thing that gives the user context of where he's going uh, and, and the types of uh, the, the different types of controls that come up and how it overlays on top of each other. The motion is the thing that really gives a, gives us a, a sense of context and system to the overall uh, UI. Um, and, and we focus so much on the UI, we actually spend a lot of time just thinking about the, 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 you know, the, the, the transitions between screens. So we, we actually have a whole motion graphics team uh, led by Jeff Arnold back there who will we'll come up a little bit later to talk more about motion. And we actually spent a huge amount of time just you know, finessing the, the transitions between screens. Um, and also, the, the, the last point here is um, you know, on, on a design that we'll see a little bit later that's, that's very flat and graphic by nature, the, 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 the motion really gives the user a sense of depth and dimension to the, to the UI, which also, again, brings a, a sense of, of, of life to the overall uh, design. Uh, content, uh, you know, ultimately the user wants to interact with his content, so we want to focus on bringing the content to life and reduce uh, the, the, the amount of chrome that's around the content. In fact, on a touch interface, we would argue that the user should interact directly with the content. Uh, for example, scroll bars really aren't necessary. You don't need to have a scroll bar to scroll through a list. You could just grab a list and scroll through it. Uh, keeping things honest, uh, th th there's a few bullet points here uh, that, that, that are related. Um, I think the first one is we really want to design for the form factor. We are called Windows Phone, and I think there's a tendency to think, yeah, you could just take Windows and you know, jam it into a phone and, and you're done, but that doesn't really make sense. We really want to make sure that the design fits the form factor. Um, and, and keeping things just really simple and direct. Uh, th that's a term around authentically digital. Um, you know, there's a tendency to kind of decorate UIs these days to make it quote unquote pretty. You see a lot of UIs with a lot of kind of glassy uh, buttons or uh, kind of brushed metal surfaces. But to us, that actually kind of distracts from the content. Uh, we want to just be really simple and direct in how we present the content. And ultimately, it's the content that makes the, the UI beautiful. Uh, what we want people to say, uh, it feels fresh, clean. If we do it right, it, will, uh, it should be beautiful. Uh, and we want it to feel like a, a new Microsoft. It's not looking backwards at, at our legacy. It is you know, kind of taking a little bit of that, but also it's mostly looking forward and, and seeing what, where we can go with, a, uh, with, with UI design. Uh, so process-wise, there's a lot of refinement here. Um, you know, the first thing we want to do is just kind of strip things down to its core elements, design it as a system. And then after we strip everything thing down to its, its core elements, then we can start adding things back up again and refine the designs as we go along. Uh, and what that does is it builds a foundation that hopefully will, will take us through multiple releases. Um, because, you know, what we hope is with what we believe are timeless principles at its core, we could then kind of adapt to trends uh, over the years. We could kind of build on top of it um, and, and grow with releases as we add new features into the, into the phone as we move forward. Fit and finish is a huge part of our process. Uh, what we have is uh, what we call the integration team. Uh, so, so that's really a team that, that, that's kind of a layer between the design team and, and, and the development team. What we have is a layer uh, in, in our framework uh, that allows us to have a team of people who just adjust essentially the layout and the animations. And what that does is it frees the developers up from doing, you know, fixing crashes and performance issues. And, and then we have a team that actually just goes in and just, you know, spends a lot of time just dialing things in as far as the layout and, and transitions are concerned. Um, and, and having that high level of fit and finish is really what separates the best products out there uh, from a lot of the products uh, that you see which at its surface might look really cool, but once you start playing with it, you just see the, you start seeing the seams uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in their designs. 
so we went through, and this is just a small sampling of, of, of all the different iterations that we went through uh, in coming up with our, our designs. Uh, even just on the start screen, we went through a, a ton of iteration. And where we landed uh, is here. This is a high level. We'll look at it in detail in, in a couple of minutes of where we are with, uh, with the Metro design for Windows Phone 7. Uh, from the start screen to details to calendar, we you know we kind of designed it as a system. Uh, we had a we have a grid system that everything snaps into. We have a dark theme that you, you've probably seen quite a bit, but also a, a light theme uh, to allow a little bit of user customization uh, for the UI. Uh, we have these things called panoramas, uh, which. Uh, it's, it's kind of a nice way to kind of bubble up content to surface to allow e uh, users uh, kind of quick access to content at a high level within a UI. And you kind of think of it as a, as a, as a, as a wide uh, panorama space. And, and, and the phone, the screen is really just a window into the space that you can pan across. Um, typography, uh, again, it, it, it was really important for us to have just a beautiful typography within the system, and we work really closely with the type t typography team at Microsoft. Uh, we use Siga, which is the, the, the font we use across many, multiple, uh, many, many Microsoft products. But we went ahead and kind of went and just kind of adjusted a little bit. Uh, what we're seeing here is, is a weight that's, that we uh, created. It's called Semi-Light. We love the lightweight the version of Siga, which is, just has this really nice, beautiful, elegant look to it. But at the same time, the lightweight font it gets a little spindly when, when rendered on UI. So uh, we created this semi-light font, which you know, kind of sp splits the difference between uh, regular and, and light. Uh, we adjusted uh, um, some of the shapes of the characters. And then in the numeral set, uh, we actually developed a new set of numerals uh, based on the old set. The old set is, is monospaced, uh, which works well, but uh, it doesn't quite have the elegance of a proportionally spaced. Uh, numerals, which we developed for uh, Siga Windows uh, WP. And icons, we had a team go out and created a, a custom icons for us, uh, which aligned uh, both, you know, fits within the layouts, but also uh, if you look at, you know, the Siga, you know, we want to make sure that it all fits well together as a system. Uh, so quickly, we'll go through a couple of motion samples. Again, uh, Jeff Arnold, uh, in, in a little bit, will go deeper into motion. Uh, but again, you know, thinking about, uh, like I was saying before, setting the context of, of navigating through the UI, uh, this is a, a navigation uh, animation that we call turnstile. So, so, uh, so if I were to click on something on the start screen and, and we navigate into the application, you know, we do this little what we call a turnstile animation into the application. Uh, this is a panorama. We have a slightly different animation into the panorama that the concept here is to give the user context that they could go ne left and right through the panorama. And as they pan through, you'll see that things kind of move in at different, uh, there's a little bit of parallax as we slide through uh, the, the panorama. Uh, email list to email. Uh, so now once you're in, app, in an application, we want to reduce the amount of, of turnstiles. That, that tends to be a little bit he heavy. Uh, and this is something that we call continuum. What this does is it takes one element from one screen and moves it into the next screen to give the user a, a sense of, of continuity uh, as, as he navigates through our UI system. So in this case, we took that name. Uh, uh, of, the, of the sender and, and moved it into the, the email card itself. Uh, even just pivoting, uh, which is uh, what we call this control up here, you could kind of go left and right uh, to get different views. Uh, in this case, on email, uh, we spent a lot of time just kind of fine tuning the, the, the nuances of, of, of pivoting through a little bit of parallax as you, as you kind of go left and right. And thinking about what happens to these little icons down here. Uh, if they change as you go through the pivots. Uh, calendar, this is actually one of the simpler animations in the system, but it's also one of my favorites. It's just something really kind of, I don't know, beautiful and powerful about the, the thought of just being able to tapping on, on a day within your month view. 
and then just zooming directly in into that day view and then back out again.